Hi, my name is Alex Branham and I am an environmental science major at Iowa State University. In this video, I'll be sharing a unique experience where a group of Iowa State students studied four lakes at Itasca State Park in Minnesota. The lakes include Bud Lake, Josephine Lake, Deming Lake, and Arco Lake. The students were separated into three groups in which each tested different aspects of the lake. The goal was to determine if the lake, lakes are meromantic or not. In short, meromantic lakes are lakes that do not mix throughout the year. You can find more about what a meromantic lake is in, is in the video made by my friend linked below. Here's a zoomed out satellite picture of the lakes where, collecting, where we collected data in reference to Lake Itasca. Here is a zoomed in picture of the four lakes where we collected data at. This picture of Bud Lake was just before going out into the canoe to collect data. Group one looked at morphometry and geospatial aspects. This includes the location of the lakes, how deep they are, what's their shape, and do these factors play a role in the lake mixing process? This group focused on collecting data for the depths of every layer in the lake. This was then used to create contour maps of each lake. The maps will show the change in depths throughout the lake. When a lake has steep sides that leads to a very deep center for a given area, it is an indicator of a meromictic lake. This picture is showing a student using a depth finder to collect the depth all around the lake. These are pictures of the routes that were taken in the boat to collect the depth at every spot in the lake. Here is a simplified cross section of what a mixed lake would look like and a not mixed lake would look like. The second group is the water sources mixing group, which I was a part of. This group focused on finding the chemical and physical aspects in the lakes that would give clues about whether the water layers are mixing or not. Their work involved collecting chemical data, including concentration of oxygen, pH, conductivity, temperature through the water column. Other chemical data was collected to determine if the lakes have micro or meromectic patterns. Our geospatial group gave us an idea of where the deepest part in the lake was. We took this information and found the spot with our rowboats and verified the depth using a depth finder. This is also known as a fish finder. Then we dropped an anchor to keep us stationary while doing the measurements. This is a little but cool device that is called the YSI probes that will collect data for pH, dissolved oxygen, temperature, depth, and specific conductivity in the water. This device is lowered into the water 0.5 meters at a time until the deepest depth is reached. This is the cable used to lower the YSI device into the water. This is the YSI device that will store all of the data collected from the probes. The data is then downloaded from this device and analyzed to determine if the lakes have a meromictic pattern or not. The third group of our lake scientists was the biological redox group. As their group name implies, they focus on biological attributes of the lake. In fact, they combine the information from physical and chemical information from other groups along with their biological measurements to explore how, the functions, how life functions in these lakes. This group focused on, focused on collecting phytoplankton at different depths of the lakes. In a meromictic lake, phytoplankton are found only at certain depths and layers of the lake. Here's a video of a student collecting the water sample to take back to the lab and analyze for phytoplankton. This is a picture of a student using a hand pump vacuum filtration system to separate the phytoplankton from the water. The students used a microscope to examine the phytoplankton. 
This is a picture of the phytoplankton under a microscope. The phytoplankton were analyzed and the light absorbance from the phytoplankton's pigment, pigment was found. If only a certain layer in the lake has a high concentration of light going into the phytoplankton pigment, that can indicate a myrmectic lake. The analysis of various data from these groups can be found in a video done by my friend linked below. Here is a group picture of everyone by Lake Itasca close to our classroom and cabins. It was such a great experience to learn and do research in this beautiful area. I would also like to thank Iowa State University and the University of Minnesota for making this research trip happen. Thank you for watching my video.